New rabies case detected near Taipei. Malaysia has no plans to ban Telegram. Good evening, I'm Carlos and welcome to News on Two. The Department of Veterinary Services, or DVS, has confirmed that a new rabies case involving a dog was reported in Kuala Sipatang, Taiping, in Perak. And DVS Director General, Dr. Dr. Kwaza Nizamuddin Hassan Nizam, said the department received a complaint from a resident in Taiping on July 13th that his dog died eight days after it had bitten two children, who are the owner's daughter and niece. Now, Dr. Dr. Kwaza said in a statement today that the dog had shown clinical symptoms such as vomiting, having no appetite, fever and cramps five days after it had bitten the girls. He added that Veterinary Research Institute, VRI, also confirmed that the brain sample taken from the carcass was positive with rabies virus based on the fluorescent antibody test and polymerase chain reaction which was conducted yesterday. He said the girls have been admitted to Taiping Hospital for treatment. The dog may have been infected through bites of rabid dogs, which were brought in by foreigners from neighboring countries by boats. He said DBS has notified the health ministry on the situation and has advised the public not to panic as the infection is only limited in one area. Well, a six-year-old toddler suspected of catching the rabies virus in Malacca is still in Malacca Hospital for treatment and monitoring purposes. Now, as for now, the Badayo child's health, health is reportedly stable, and State Health Sport Development and Anti-Drugs Deputy Committee Chairman Dr. Ng Chun Kun said the child involved is now placed in a general children's ward, and he will only be allowed to return home after health examinations that will be known shortly is confirmed to be negative. The public is asked not to panic at this moment, as new developments seeing as the child has not yet tested positive for the rabies virus, which killed three people in Sarawak recently. And speaking near Jasin Malaka, he said the state veterinary department has been conducting examinations on stray dogs that are caught to ensure a rabies free environment. And last Wednesday, a six-year-old boy was sent to Malacca Hospital after reportedly having a fever and the flu. And the victim is said to have been bitten by a dog on their way home to a village in Surian, Sarawak. Now, the Sarawak Veterinary Services Department, JPVS, has vaccinated 3,785 pets in a preventive effort against the spread of rabies. And the Sarawak State Disaster Management Committee Secretariat in a statement informed that as of yesterday evening, JPVS had vaccinated 952 dogs, 2,810 cats and 23 other animals. Well, cumulatively from April 1st to July 15, about 290 cases of a dog bite in a 10-kilometer radius from the infected area in Syrian have been detected. And the statement said 66 of the 290 bite cases were detected between July 2nd until last night with 14 new cases, of which 299 cases were given vaccinations. In Kampong Paon, Sungai Rimu, Kampong Paon, Sungai Rimu, Bakong, Kampong Ramun, Kampong Labor, Kampong Krait, Kampong Saroban, and Kampong Stanga in Syrian districts have been declared rabies-infected areas as of Thursday. Well, Deputy Agriculture and Agro-Base Industries Minister Dr. Sri Tajuddin Abdul Rahman said several areas in Sarawak are expected to be quarantined following an outbreak of rabies, especially in Syrian. Well, however, the quarantine would not involve the entire district because it may affect the socio-economic status of the people in the respective districts. And Dr. Sri Tajuddin said the quarantine will be enforced if the situation becomes serious, but at the same time, the pros and cons must be looked at before such action is taken. He added the Sarawak Veterinary Services Department are taking various steps to curb the spread of the virus. And speaking at his parliamentary constituency in Pasir Salak, he said there were four confirmed rabies cases in Syrian where three died and one is now warded at the Sarawak General Hospital. Well, Malaysia has no plan to follow Indonesia in blocking the Telegram social media platform. And Deputy Prime Minister Dato Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid Abidi said that while he respected Indonesia's decision to ban the application, he said the Home Ministry had no reason to ban it in Malaysia just yet. Dato Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid was quick to add that the government has no intention to meddle in the personal communications of Telegram users in Malaysia.
Kita tidak berhasrat untuk mencampuri chatting pribadi di antara pengguna Telegram dan kita menghormati hak pribadi namun kita mempunyai beberapa kaedah tertentu bagi memantau jika terdapat komunikasi yang melibatkan soal keganasan Asked which other social media applications were being monitored, he said platforms like Facebook, WhatsApp and Instagram had been found to contain some negative elements linked to terrorist activities. He said this to reporters after attending the Jekyll Hari Raya open house in Kuala Lumpur today. Indonesia banned Telegram on Friday, claiming it was being used by terrorists to recruit new members and source for funds. Well, Malaysians were urged to give their full trust to a government that has a clear leadership, direction and hierarchical structure to ensure a secure future. And speaking to the media at the National Alumno Hari Raya Idol Fitri 2017 celebration at the Putra World Trade Center today, Prime Minister Dr. Sri Najib Chen Razak said the Pakatan Harapan Coalition has no clear leaders or capabilities or direction for the country. Kita ada track record uh, selama 60 tahun uh, yang juga jelas dan kita ada visi uh, di mana kita sedang menggubal TN50 maknanya kita kita dapat tahu bahawa UMNO mampu mentadbir negara masa kini dan kita akan dapat tahu uh, hala tuju masa depan uh, UMNO nak bagaimana ke arah mana UMNO nak bawa negara kita semuanya jelas Dr. Sri Najib said Malaysians should not gamble with their future by voting for the opposition when they have a reliable option such as UMNO and Barisan Nasional. He said the world has recognized that the current government has put the country at a position that Malaysians can be proud of. Federal Land Development Authority, FALDA, welcomes the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, MACC's probe into FALDA Investment Corporation's Henry and Berhardo FIC purchase of a four-star hotel in Kensington, London. And FALDA Chairman Tan Sri Shahrir Abdul Samad has assured full cooperation into the probe should the MACC require it. Speaking in Malacca today, Tan Sri Shahri believes that the probe will serve to purge Felda from the scourge of corruption in line with the corruption free pledge it signed in April. penyelesaian yang sebaik pasal ini ialah satu yang memang boleh membantu kita pulihkan keyakinan orang ramai kepada Felda. Kita menyokong tindakan terhadap rasuah. Kalau ada, teruskan ya dan kita akan kerjasama sepenuhnya dengan SPRM. Yesterday, MACC Chief Commissioner Dr. Zulkifli Ahmad ordered a thorough investigation into the purchase of the high-end property following fresh information that surfaced recently. The probe will focus on uncovering any possible elements of corruption or abuse of power in the process of acquiring the property. The fire and rescue team of Tanjong Karang dispatched a crew upon receiving a report that a toddler aged five was trapped in a locked car. And Tanjong Karang Fire and Rescue Chief Azmi Abbas in a statement said the toddler Nur Ashifa Muhammad Ashraf was trapped in a car after it was self-locked when her mother left to go buy food in a nearby shop. And the child was fast asleep on the back seat of the car when the incident took place. And the Tanjong Karang Fire and Rescue Team led by Operations Chief Azmori Mansour took only about three minutes to open the door using specific tools. The child was rescued safely before uniting her with her mother. Well, coming up next, joint initiative for cash crops project in Lintau. Then and more, stay with us. Well, land developer Felcra and Menteri Besar Incorporated MBI will begin a cash crops project in Lengkawi soon. Well, 207 hectares of land area were identified in Bukit Sawak and Salat Bagan Nyo for the planting of pineapple and watermelon. Felgra Burhan board member Dato Ismail Kasim said the pilot project will serve as a pioneer in national food security. Cuma ni sekarang uh, bagaimana kita nak uh, membuat koordinasi dengan semua agensi dan JLC yang terbabit kerjasama di bawah satu konsortium besar mungkin uh, fikiran insyaallah akan tidak terlepas. 
He was met at an idol fitri event in Alasar, attended by Mantri Basant and Sri Ahmad Basha Madhanipa. Falkra allocated 70 million ringgit to develop idol land of about 2,200 hectares across the country. Well, 50 project tenders to upgrade rural roads in Johor were awarded to contractors registered under the Johor Malay Contractors Cooperative. And the initiative was done through a phase two balloting process involving a sum of 7.7 .7 million ringgit. State Public Works Rural and Regional Development Committee Chairman Dato Hasni Mohammed said the voting process provided opportunities for cooperative contractors to get involved in the project. Kerja-kerja secara cabutan undi ini akan dapat memberi peluang yang uh, yang lebih uh, dan uh, pengagihan kerja yang lebih telus kepada kontraktor-kontraktor uh, uh, yang ada um, berdaftar ataupun uh, yang uh, terdapat di daerah-daerah dalam negeri Johor. He was speaking after the tender drawing event for the Jalan Kampung Project Phase 2 in Skudai, Johor. It was officiated by Menteri Basan, Dr. Mohamed Khalid Nordin. The Johor Center for Contractor Development, JCCD, had also taken steps to accommodate for a 0.5% of state allocations for infrastructure development. The goal is to expose and open up opportunities for contractors involved in the projects offered in Johor. The Mass Rapid Transit MRT has set a benchmark for all future public transportation plans, now taking into account connectivity, needs and quality of life. The Land Public Transport Commission, SPAD, said with the full implementation of Phase 2 of the MRT Sungai Bulo Kajang SBK line tomorrow, the system will have the capacity to accommodate daily ridership of 400,000. And SPAD Chief Executive Officer Asharuddin Madsa in a statement said with an estimated end-to-end -end travel time of 84 minutes, the 51-kilometre MRT line integrates seven stations with existing rail lines providing significant time saving. He added the 14 MRT stations equipped with park and ride facilities to encourage more commuters to leave their cars behind while transit will help to reduce carbon emissions. Complementing this connectivity will be 300 MRT feeder buses operating between 5 kilometers to 7 kilometer radius of the MRT line. As Harudin also said, projects like the MRT Line 2, which connects Sungai Bulo, Serdang, Putrajaya, and LRT 3, which linked Bandautama and Johan Setia, are expected to unlock more transit oriented development opportunities that will help the government recoup large. And that concludes this evening's News on 2. In our top story, new rabies case detected near Taipei. Well, do join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. I'm Amin Carlos, and thanks for watching. Good night.